Our meeting today will discuss the case of constant acceleration. What is the meaning of constant acceleration and what is the meaning of previous part that we covered on Wednesday? Just to let you know, previously I talked about rectilinear motion. We are talking about S, V, and acceleration. S means position. V means velocity. A means acceleration. And we learned that V equal differentiation of S with respect to time. Acceleration equal differentiation of velocity with respect to time. If you go back to our previous examples, you can find acceleration equal something as a function of time of t. Probably your acceleration equal 4t. Probably your acceleration equal 5 minus 10t. Probably your acceleration equal 2t square. I don't care about the equation, but I need you to understand that acceleration is variable. Depends on time. T. What you mean? I mean, at t equals zero, we can get acceleration with a value. One. If t at time equal one second, we have different value for acceleration. Value two. At t equal two second, we have third value for acceleration. Value three. And keep going. So for this part, you have acceleration as a function of time. Once the time change, acceleration will have a different value. That makes sense? But today we will cover another topic, another part of dynamics. I'm talking about constant acceleration. That means acceleration equal five meter per second square. So at time equal zero, acceleration equal five. At time equal one, acceleration equal five. At time equal 100, acceleration equal five because acceleration is given as a constant. So make sure your problem is talking about constant acceleration or variable acceleration. This one, we are talking about variable acceleration as a function of time. But this one is talking about constant acceleration. By the way, I will let you open your notes during the exam. These equations for dynamics are open book. Open book. So I'm giving you a permission to open your notes during the exam for exam number three. You don't need to remember all of these equations. You can open your notes during exam number three. That's fine for me. So if you are talking about constant acceleration, we have three different equation for acceleration, velocity, and displacement. Acceleration will equal a constant, a number. Then velocity equal this acceleration time t minus t naught plus v naught. Uh, position s 
equal a naught time t minus t naught squared by 2 plus v naught time t minus t naught plus s naught. Any term with naught means initial value. s naught initial displacement at the initial time. v naught initial velocity at initial time. t naught initial time. So any term with naught means at the initial condition. S final displacement, V final velocity, A naught or A, all of them equal constant number. We don't have initial value for acceleration or final value of acceleration because both of them must be one number because we are talking about constant acceleration. We have a force equation that combine velocity and acceleration and displacement, all of them in one equation. We have additional equation for velocity as a function of position may be written as V naught square equal V naught square, I'm sorry, V square equal V naught square plus two acceleration time S minus S naught. So please be careful. If the problem is talking about constant acceleration, you have to come back to this slide, slide number 10. If the problem is talking about, or the condition is talking about constant acceleration, means you have to come back to this slide and use these three equations or this force equation. Any question so far? Guys, do you have any question so far? Let's start to do one example. We have example number five. A car starts from rest and moves with a constant acceleration. Wait, wait a moment. The problem gives you indication that we are talking about constant acceleration. And the constant acceleration is given by six. So A naught equal six meter per second square constant acceleration. So, put in your mind that I'm going to use this equation or this one or this one or this one to figure out the required term in this problem. Okay, keep going. So, car starts from rest and moves with a constant acceleration of 6 meter per second square. What is the speed velocity? of the car after four seconds. So we have a car started from rest and moved with constant acceleration equal four, uh, I'm sorry, six meter per second square after time equal four second. Can you tell me what is the velocity is? So we are talking about velocity and acceleration. Please go back. What do you think? Which equation I'm gonna use? I need equation talking about velocity and the time and acceleration only. What do you think? Last one is talking about position also, S. We don't have anything related to S. What do you think about the second equation? I believe the second equation will be the perfect equation because second equation is a function of velocity, acceleration, and the time. That's it. So, your velocity at any time equal acceleration time t minus t naught plus v naught. 
guys, what is the value of A naught? Six meter per second squared, it's a given. What is the value of T naught? What is the value of V naught? And what is the value of time T? To finally figure out the velocity V. What do you think? I will assume the car starts from rest. From rest, no movement. That means the initial velocity is zero. The initial time is zero. At time zero, the car is at rest. So we don't have velocity at the beginning. We don't have time at the beginning. We are looking for speed, velocity, after time equal four seconds. So at T equal four second, we need to figure out the time, the velocity V. So go ahead, acceleration equal six. The final time equal four. The initial time is zero at the beginning. The initial velocity is zero. Why? Because the problem said the car starts from rest. So the final velocity will be 24 meter per second. Any question? So this problem give you some hints. First, the problem tell you told you that we are talking about constant acceleration. The problem told you that the, st the car starts from rest. From rest means initial conditions. All of the initial condition will be zero. Zero. One more example. One more example. We have a truck. Increases its speed uniformly. This term is very important. What is the meaning of increasing speed uniformly? Uniformly means constant acceleration. Uniformly means constant value, constant acceleration. So, the truck increases its speed uniformly from velocity 13 km per hour to 50 km per hour in 25 seconds. Hey, wait. V naught, the initial velocity was 13 km per hour. The final velocity, 50 kilometer per hour that makes sense because the initial condition was 13 the final condition was 50 do you know what is the time at the initial condition do you know what is the final time at the initial condition no i don't know but what i know t minus t naught equal 25 seconds that makes sense. Did the problem told you? Uh, did the problem tell you what is what was the time at the initial condition? No. What is the time at the final condition? No. But to start from the initial condition to final condition, we need twenty five seconds. So the difference between t naught t and the t naught equal twenty five seconds. What is most nearly the acceleration of the truck? Okay. We need equation, function of velocity, time, and acceleration. The same one. Velocity equal A naught, T minus T naught plus V naught. The final velocity is 50. Acceleration is unknown. T minus T naught, the difference between initial time and the final time was 25 seconds. Plus, initial velocity was 13 kilometer per hour. 
I can figure out the value of a node, but you have a big mistake here. Can you tell me what is the big mistake in this equation right now? If you get a value from these numbers, you have a mistake. What is the mistake? I need answer. I need someone to tell me what is the mistake. V naught, I'm sorry, finite velocity 50 kilometer per hour. Acceleration is unknown. T minus T naught given 25 seconds. Plus V naught, the initial velocity was 13 kilometer per hour. If I did my calculations using my calculator and get a note from this equation, do you think I got the correct number or wrong number? Any comment? Any? Un Thank you, David. Thank you, Mitchell. Thank you. Look, look to the, 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 the numbers. You are talking about 50 kilometer per hour. V naught kilometer per hour. T minus T naught second doesn't make sense. You are talking about hour and the hour, and then you are talking about second. You need to convert. You need to convert one to the other one, hour to second or second to hour. I believe it's more easy to convert 25 to divide it by 60 and another 60. So for this one, I will divide 25 by 60 times 60. The first 60 to convert from second to minute. The second 60 to convert from minute to hour. Then I can get a number. Your number will be 50 minus 13 divide. This number will be 5,328 kilometer per hour square. One more time, 50 minus 13, divide, yeah. So make sure you are using the correct unit. Make sure you are using the correct unit. Any question? And the final value for acceleration will follow the used unit. What your unit you are used? I used kilometer and hour. So the final value will be kilometer per hour square because kilometer per hour square is equivalent to meter per second square is equivalent to feet per second square. We need distance per square unit of time. Does that make sense? Okay. So the key to start this kind of problem to figure out you are talking about constant acceleration. You should search for a key for indication. The problem here clearly said constant acceleration for this one we have a term uniformly one more example we have a bicycle moves with a constant acceleration perfect so this term is very clear constant acceleration means a not equal negative that's fine negative means you are decreasing your movement negative acceleration means you are slowing down when you are hitting the brake of your car you are slowing the car movement that means you are your acceleration is negative if the initial velocity of the bike is initial means v naught initial velocity four meter per second how far, how far does it travel in t equal three second? What is the meaning of how far? Do you know what is the meaning of how far? How far means what? 
you need to translate the problem to terms. Do you think what is the meaning of how far? How long means the time? We need to go back to English. Possession. Thank you, Mitchell. Yeah. Guys, this expression is very important. I'm teaching them to my kids. How long, I believe, means time. How far, I believe, means distance. Does that make sense? Distance means position. Position means S. So, in this problem, we are looking for S. Did the problem told you or tell you anything related to initial time? No. So initial velocity is four. Initial time is zero at the beginning. The final time is three. We need, uh, we are talking about constant acceleration. So we need equation to, or equation in these terms, acceleration, velocity, time, and position. So we need to go back to this equation. I think I will use this one. The final distance or the final position is equal A naught T minus T naught squared divided by two. I'm going to write it here S at any time equal a naught t minus t naught square divide two plus v naught time t minus t naught plus s naught. One more time. We are good. Okay. Did the problem tell you? anything related to initial position the only thing related to initial condition was initial velocity was given by four anything related to any initial condition will be zero because the problem did not mention anything related to the initial condition so t naught equals zero s naught equals zero go ahead and put your number so the final position S equal A naught negative two. Please don't forget the sign negative. The final time was three second. Initial time zero. Square divide two. Initial velocity is given four meter per second. Final time three. Initial time zero. The initial position plus S naught zero. Nothing mentioned about this one. So the we have an equation with numbers. Go ahead and get your final number. Minus 2 times 3 squared divide 2 plus 12. This number equals 3 meter. Meter. Why meter? Because you are talking about distance. You are talking about uh, position. So S means distance. So we are using unit for distance, which is meter. Easy? Looks good. Looks good. You need only to read your problem carefully. One more. Uh, yeah. One more example. We have a ball. It's dropped from a height of 60 meters. So you are on the floor of your building and your building has a height of 60 meters. For example, uh, you are on the roof of a building with height 60 meters above the ground. How long? What is the meaning of how long? Do you know what is the meaning of how long? Does it take to hit the ground? It's a good question. How long? You should know. Guys, are you still here? How long? How long? How long means time.
okay not second david but time we we don't we, i don't know the time will be in second me in minute in hour in days not sure so it means time okay so how long it means time but before doing anything in this problem i would like to explain something you should learn it in physics i believe if you are on a building and here is the ground surface and this building has a height equal 60 meter above the ground and you are standing here and you throw the ball this ball will be or will fall down does that make sense we need to uh, get the time needed for the ball starting from this position until hitting the ground what is the time required for this ball to hit the ground surface do you think we are talking about constant acceleration if yes what is the value of this acceleration this is a question do you think we are talking about constant acceleration uh, I, I believe i learned this in physics this is called free falling free falling what is the value of the acceleration for this ball to hit the ground do you remember something like this thank you thank you guys yes we learned this from physics if you have something falling down which is free your acceleration is constant yes and the value of acceleration equal acceleration of gravity g which is 9.8 meter per second square so for this problem the boy catching this or uh, pulling this uh, ball with initial condition t naught equal zero s naught equal zero v naught equal zero everything is zero at the beginning then the ball falling down at the final condition can you tell me what is the time at the final what is the final s 60 meter because this for this ball traveling is traveling a distance to the final destination equal 60 meter so s equal a naught t minus t naught square divide two v naught t minus t naught plus s naught if you are talking about position or distance and acceleration we will use this uh, equation acceleration equal 9.8 9.81 or 9.8 that's that's good the final t i'm looking to the final t what is the final time the initial time is zero divide two initial velocity zero so this term will be cancelled we don't have initial velocity initial position zero we don't have initial position we don't have initial time uh, distance and your final distance or final position after 60 meter 
the only unknown in this equation is your time t. So I can figure out the value of t equal 3.5 second. Guys, make sure you are using the correct unit. This 60 in meter. This acceleration in meter per second squared. That means your final value for T will be in second because everything in meter and everything in second, so your final time will be in second. That means this ball will need 3.5 second to hit the ground surface. So the only point in this example is ball dropping down, free falling. That means this ball is moving with constant acceleration equal acceleration of gravity, 9.81 or 9.8 meter per second squared. And your initial Condition all of the initial condition t not equal zero v not equal zero s not equal zero and your final time I'm looking for your final velocity uh, it's not a big deal your final destination is s so make sure which terms are given and which terms are missing any question for this point. It's a good question, Mitchell. And the answer for your question will be answered in the example number seven. If you are falling, if the ball falling down from this position to hit the ground surface, acceleration equal positive 9.81 meter per second square. But if you are hitting your ball from the ground to be above, that means the ball going up by constant acceleration equal negative 9.81. Because at, at a certain time, the ball will stop, will be stopped to go back to the ground. So your acceleration is decreased. Dece I'm sorry, de uh, decreasing the uh, rate of change of velocity. So it will be negative. So if the ball falling down, your acceleration is positive. If the ball uh, not falling down, but kicking up, your acceleration will be in a negative value. Good question, Mitchell. Thank you. Any other question? Con, it's not constant velocity, it's a constant acceleration. Constant acceleration, not constant velocity. Constant acceleration means with negative, that means the velocity is decreasing, 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 decreasing until the velocity reaches zero, then the ball will come back. Okay, the idea is, if you are kicking a ball, you are on the ground surface. And you are kicking the ball to above, to up, with acceleration equal negative 9.81. Negative means, negative acceleration means the velocity 
decreasing with constant rate equal 9.81 every second so until the velocity is decreasing 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 until the velocity reaches zero that means rest that means the ball will start to return to the ground surface okay yeah no the acceleration when the ball will start to return back the acceleration will change to positive 9.81 so when the ball moving to up the acceleration is negative when the ball moving to down the acceleration is positive let's do this example and see what's going on acceleration cannot be zero acceleration is a constant but the velocity you have misunderstanding between velocity and acceleration let's do this example a ball is thrown vertically upward with an initial speed of 25 24 meter per second most nearly how long will it take for the ball to return to the thrower we have ground surface we have someone here taking this ball up with initial velocity here equal 24 meter per second when you hit the ball to up the initial velocity for the ball is 24 meter per second when the ball traveling to up we have constant acceleration equal negative 9.81 meter per second square until this ball going up 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 the velocity decreasing 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 until a point this point velocity will be zero velocity acceleration is still constant i'm talking about velocity because if the velocity is zero that means at rest then the ball will start to go back so the first condition you kicked the ball to up the ball will go up but the velocity is decreasing 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 with this rate 9.81 until the velocity reach zero the second trip for the ball to return back to the ground surface i have question at this moment the velocity here initial velocity is zero and the ball is coming back with constant acceleration equal positive 9.81 that makes sense let's start with the first trip we have velocity at any time equal acceleration t minus t naught plus v naught final velocity is zero the final velocity for this trip is zero acceleration is negative 9.81 final time i'm not sure what is the final time i'm not sure what is the trip uh, time to reach to this point the initial time is zero we don't have initial time the initial velocity is given 24 
the only unknown in this equation is t time so 24 divided 9.81 2.4 second that means the ball needs 2.4 seconds to reach to this position. After 2.4 seconds, the ball will start to go back to the thrower. So what do you think? The total time for the two trips will be 2.4 time to equal 4.8 second i believe because the time needed for the first trip will equal the time needed for the second trip because you are talking about the same distance and the same acceleration rate so if you got the first time go ahead and multiply it by two to get the total trip time. So we need how long. How long means time. Will it take for the ball to return to the thrower? When the this guy kick the ball, the ball will go up in 2.4 seconds and go down in another 2.4 seconds. That means the total time needed will be 4.8 seconds. What do you think, you guys? It's physics. It's dynamics. Okay. Any question for this point? Any question for this point? So until this moment, I covered two parts of dynamic basics. The first part, what is the mathematical? relationship between position and velocity and acceleration we need to do integration or differentiation because your acceleration is variable function of time the second part i cover today if the acceleration is a constant value one value five six 9.8 it's a value constant value that means we have a good relationship between these terms we can use them make sure we are talking about free fall so your acceleration is not given in the problem but you need to figure it out your acceleration in this condition will be acceleration of gravity and you need to make sure is it positive value or negative value based on the direction of movement the last part that i will cover next week projectile 